Hello and welcome to the Eforum Talk Show. Our guest today is Anvish Sharma, CMO of Xiaomi India. Unlike other mobile phone makers and device makers who ask people to buy their devices around the festival time, Mr. Sharma is telling consumers not to buy any tech products yet. So we decided to ask him why. Welcome to the show, Anuj. Thanks, Kanjum. Uh, so, Anuj, I would like to start my conversation with your return to Xiaomi India. I think you returned uh, in, in June 2022. And it was the time when both Indian and global, global economy both were undergoing, you know, huge churns, inflation, Ukraine-Russia war, joblessness. They are affecting consumer sentiments even now. And at the same time, markets are fully open right after two subdued years and marketers are expecting a bumper festive season what kind of challenges you are facing at in your second stint at Xiong? sure sure i think that's a very interesting question uh you know when when i uh, moved from the, the xiaomi marketing role uh, this was back in 2020 we just gone into the lockdown first phase and stuff like that uh, i think the biggest challenge that is uh, you know, coming back after two years is uh, the team dynamics, the the way overall communications are happening uh, have changed significantly. So the first aspect or the first challenge I had was, you know, to put a team together that hadn't really worked with each other for almost two years in a physical space. And then obviously try and get into a particular direction. Uh, and then from that internal challenge, taking it from ex to external world, uh, you know, there is a lot of uh, different voices that consumers are hearing right now. Uh, you know, obviously one part that's getting affected, like you clearly mentioned, was the global economy and the effects that it will have. I mean, we are, a, you know, we are in a global economy. Everything that happens in a particular part of the uh, globe will come in. So consumers are also kind of trying to figure out, should I buy? Should I not buy? You know, am I making the right options? Am I doing the right thing? Uh, and then on the other side, you've got this entire barrage because again, what you were mentioning that after two years when the markets have opened, everyone's basically gone uh, a little more amplified saying that buy us, buy this, buy that now. Uh, because obviously everyone's trying to meet their sales targets. Uh, so that's understandable. And especially in the telecom space, it's become even worse because you've got this added complexity of 4G, 5G, should I buy that, should I buy uh, something else? So from a consumer perspective, obviously there's a lot of noise that's coming in. Uh, while I don't think anyone's holding their hands and guiding them. Uh, and that's a challenge that we have. Because in Xiaomi, right from the start, you know, our, uh, I, I remember back in 2019, somebody had asked me this question when I was doing my first stint uh, in Xiaomi. Uh, how is you know Xiaomi marketing like? And I said, this is the easiest job in the world because all I need to do is educate consumers, right? I don't have to go and hard sell. I don't need to manipulate anyone. Uh, and I think that stays there today as well. So yeah, here we are. Uh, so, I mean, as you mentioned that you worked pre-COVID and then post-COVID, what kind of marketing strategies are being you know used mm -hmm. now compared to 2020 and i'm asking now that includes the fully open market yeah i think uh, till 2019 uh, you know creating a market strategy a marketing strategy was kind of simpler uh, you know obviously at that point we would uh, say that this is really complex and the entire marketing mix is hard uh, but over the last two years so one is you know otts blew up so the, you've got this complexity of not only hundreds of TV channels, but then you've got the OTT space as well. And who's where? Uh, are people watching it in families? Are people watching it alone? Uh, and then on top of that, of course, uh, the entire aspect of digital and short video consumption went up. I don't see consumers going back to 2019. Right? Markets have opened. We are talking about return to some kind of normalcy, but the media landscape has changed forever. I think one clear indication of that was the, the IPL auctions, 
where the digital rights went for higher than the, the TV rights. Uh, so I think things are changing. And even for us, then, you know, digital or reaching the right consumer at the right time starts becoming more and more important. I think IPL media rights uh, is going to change the, you know, entire marketing strategies of all the businesses, all the brands, yeah. right? That, that, that's, it's just a, you know, it's just a first uh, hint that we've seen of changing dynamics. Uh, I don't know how far it will go and what direction it will take for this. Mm-hmm. So Onam Ganpati and Diwali, they are, you know, some of the biggest festivals during which consumers buy a lot of things, you know. Yeah household items, devices, mobile phones, TVs, but you are recommending them to wait and not buy yet. Why? <laughs> yeah, that, that's a very, uh, I mean, I would say uh, it, from from outside and sounds like a very weird kind of a strategy, but uh, you know, how you kind of calling out each of these festivals uh, obviously are auspicious in their way. Uh, they are heralding kind of a start, right? So for, especially like, for example, Diwali is very big in uh, my family and it's taken as a start of new things. It's also obviously a family uh, festival. So you get back, I'll probably go back home, uh, spend, you know, or basically uh, spend the entire Diwali time with family. If not with family, at least people always get together with friends and celebrate Diwali that way. So it's a community kind of a festival. And here we were looking at, you know, who are our consumers in Xiaomi? And if I could, uh, it's a very hard way to kind of put this in, but uh, if I could put some sort of demographic, uh, a lot of students buy our devices uh, and they continue buying our devices even into their first job. And it, now that, that sh- I mean, we are only eight years old in the, in the country right now. And some of those guys have gotten married. Uh, they may or may not have a kid yet, but they're still young couples. And all of these three had a few common traits. Uh, this is where I would probably dive into the psychographics of it. One very important thing that came in, if I could sum it into one word, is control. They want complete control over their decisions. right? Uh, maybe you know, for... The entirety of their lives, they were told, do this, you know, take up science or arts, uh, become a doctor, engineer. Finally, when they've got that freedom, they want that control. But while they've got that control, the second aspect that comes in is, uh, or essentially the fears that they have. And one big fear is making the wrong choice. And obviously, you know, I'm not just talking about in terms of our products, but it's wrong choices in life. Obviously, at Xiaomi, we cannot dictate everything that you do in life, but we can definitely tell you as a friend uh, what you should do uh, when it comes to technology products. Uh, and this has been in our core philosophy. In fact, uh, at Xiaomi, you know, it's, it's in our brand vision uh, that we are not supposed to treat our consumers, we're not supposed to treat our fans as kings and queens. Right? I mean, is this uh, age old saying consumer is king or customer is king? We do not believe that. Uh, in fact, uh, we say that our fans, our consumers are our friends because a lot of times you would appease a king or a queen by telling them lies. But rarely do you see a friend telling you something that you should not be doing. I mean, if, if a friend is giving you wrong advice, chances are that that person should not be a friend. But as a friend, we always believe that you know you should give the right advice. Essentially, a friend is somebody who will tell you what's right for you, and this is where we come in. And uh, you know, this entire campaign actually was born out of a couple of uh, instances that we had, and one very interesting one is uh, something that happened with uh, Sumit. So Sumit is in my team, and he handles uh, our product marketing, and uh, this is. I think around the 12th or 13th of August, so just before the the Independence Day long weekend that came in. And at a whim, you know, in the evening, he's like, uh, Max has never seen the ocean. Max is his dog, right? So he's got this uh, really sweet eight-year-old lab. 
and he's like max has never seen the ocean i'm going to go and show him the ocean uh, now bangalore does not have any oceans or beaches so he basically decided to drive down to goa from here it's a long drive so on friday night uh, i think about 8:30 or 9 in the evening he on his way back home very close to his house there's a petrol pump and he stopped there i mean that's his usual place and uh, in just that banter the the petrol pump attendant asked him sir uh, i mean he asked full tank the guy said sir long drive pe ja rahe ho so sumit is like yeah uh and the guy turns around and says sir uh, tomorrow morning the, are you leaving tomorrow morning and sumit is yes so he's like sir we are a 24 hour petrol pump can you come back tomorrow morning instead of filling up petrol now so sumit asked why uh, and uh, this guy is like sir tomorrow uh, petrol price is going down so you will save some money because you're going for a full tank now you know this happened i think on a friday night and then saturday morning on the way to the uh, to his drive basically he was driving all the way to goa he did fill up his full tank and yes he got some benefit right probably the petrol price went down by like a, uh, a rupee or two so it's just 50 rupees 100 rupees saving but when he came back uh, after the long weekend to office on tuesday morning he was still talking about it right it was so weird that in our space when everyone is you know as a consumer every time we go there we think that people are going to take advantage of us somebody turns around and is giving you that benefit it really sticks uh, and this is where you know from a shami perspective also a lot of times when we are talking to our me fans when me fans are talking to each other uh, we keep hearing this i, I remember uh, some time back uh, this guy who had walked up to me uh, one of our fans in our fan meets and he said uh, sir i'm looking to buy this particular phone but i'm going to buy this diwali uh, so the message basically stays the same that you will have more benefit so we thought as friends because we are friends of our consumers why don't we extend this message across the board uh, it is to reduce any post purchase dissonance it is to tell people that if you just wait another 10 days right so we're not asking people to give up on their life priorities and say that okay you know if you want that uh, you know new 5g phone or something like that wait out and don't buy it we're just saying wait for another 10 days and you will gain something more right uh, it's just that trust saying that i will not take your money right now but just make you wait another 10 days so that you can get that benefit so we're just taking that inspiration and and kind of increasing the or amplifying that message for everyone who is looking to buy a shami product very interesting uh, anuj uh, what are your marketing plans around this campaign and also for the entire season uh so i think from a marketing ca- uh, campaign perspective you know this one becomes a little interesting compared to our normal campaigns uh, because it's event based it's timeline based you have a very short runway uh so we are going to do a combination of uh, print but stick mostly with digital so we will have you know i i am hoping very simplified easy to understand uh, print adverts but then from there we are going to start helping or guiding consumers into uh, you know what's right for them uh, and we asking them to wait right saying see all your options and then buy Uh, instead of trying to get into a hurry to buy stuff so that's that's where the digital part comes in so that is the campaign part and uh, if i ask in terms of adx you know in terms of percentage if you can you know tell us how much uh, you know adx you are going to spend this festive season compared to uh, 2020 and 2021 mm-hmm. i think compared to the last two years it probably could be almost about Uh, 200 percent hmm. that's very interesting yeah and uh, a lot most of it actually i'm not going to say a lot but uh, most of it is going towards the digital side because you know that that's a little more on the performance side a little more in terms of reaching the right people with the right message 
rather than you know just spraying it all out there and hoping it sticks 70 80 percent you mean to say yeah yes. okay so how are you expecting the festive season sale turn out to be this year uh i mean nobody knows for sure uh to be honest but uh from a consumer sentiment perspective, uh, a lot of people are looking forward to it. So that's that's obviously a positive. Uh, I'm also hoping that, you know, in October, uh, we would see some rollout of 5G networks. So at least from a smartphone side of our business, the 5G adoption would start kicking up, uh, which should be good news because uh, recently we expanded our portfolio and we've got 5G phones even under 15,000. So clearly, you know, whether you want like a, a flagship at 60,000 rupees with 5G or you know something to get you started, uh, we've got that covered. So one is on the smartphone side, that should take up. Second is, uh, at least for, from a family perspective, uh, we are seeing a lot more interest in larger TVs now. So TV is around 50 inches. Uh, and then considering that a lot of OTTs have also improved their overall uh, offerings, you know, a lot of new movies come on to the OTT platforms now uh, first. Uh, we're also hoping that large screen 4K TVs could become a, a thing. So the intent seems to be there. Uh, finally, if that converts or not, uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. uh, as you said that you entered Indian market uh, eight years ago, and I suppose OnePlus also arrived in India around the same time. So, But you both operated in different price segments initially. But now you both are all, almost same size in the smartphone segment. Are mm -hmm. you concerned about it? And what exactly are your plans to you know, go ahead? Uh, so obviously OnePlus has built a very, very strong uh, you know, brand. Uh, and they, they've obviously been focusing on the, the higher end. Uh, and they've done a really good job with that. Uh, however, from... Our perspective, uh, you know, we believe that innovation should be for everyone. So right from the beginning, we kept uh, all the, the price plans open. So I think currently, uh, as for the last IDC report, uh, OnePlus was at about 3 to 4% market share. Uh, we are still operating at about 20, 22%. So probably in the premium segment, I think OnePlus has done a really good job. And this is something that, you know, we also kind of learn from. But at an overall market perspective, uh, you know, we are lucky that uh, we continue to be number one players. Uh, but, but you know, uh, no specific strategy in terms of market share. I think our strategy will continue to be how do we provide the best products uh, to essentially our friends or fans. Uh, and we hope that we continue to do a good job there. Mm -hmm. uh so, so my last question, so there were media reports that says that India seeks to house Chinese firms from sub-$150 phone market. Uh, although government has denied this, uh, but how are you, you know, I mean, are you, are you planning any, any different strategy, you know, after uh, reading this report? Uh, no, so we, we would obviously have to wait because, you know, that's a big segment uh, of the market. Uh, so taking any decisions uh, from a business perspective based on that media report uh, would not probably be the right way of going about it. So we are obviously in touch with the government. We read what the, the, the follow-up uh, you know, statements that came out from the ministry. Uh, so right now, uh, no change in the strategy. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Anush, for taking time out and speaking to you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Kanchan. Thank you.